What's up, math fans? In honor of Sweater Fridays, I gotta share a joke that one of my students told me. Uh, why is a doctor never angry? Because he has a lot of patience. Get it? Patience? Okay, so let's get into some math. Before we even get into this math, you have to have some background knowledge. You should know everything there is to know about GCF, which is a separate video, uh, using the sum product method. Um, I might have taught this as the opposite of FOIL or anti-FOIL. Um, so these are both ways of factoring. Also dots, difference of two squares, you have to know how to factor that. Um, you should also know what I mean by rainbow. Rainbow is a method I taught in another video, but it wasn't titled rainbow. It was how to factor a quadratic when A is not equal to zero. Um, and also you should know the difference between an equation and an expression. So, if I want to solve a quadratic equation, I'm looking for equations. So far I've been dealing with expressions. Expressions is a, is a mathematical term without an equal sign. Here we have it with an equal sign. So the difference between a quadratic equation and a quadratic expression, they're very similar. First of all, quadratic again means the highest exponent is two. So this is a quadratic, this is a quadratic, they're all quadratics here, all right? quadratic expression is uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a quadratic expression. A quadratic equation is the same exact thing, but it's equal to zero. It has to be equal to zero. See how I set it up equal to zero? In a future video, I'm gonna do it when it doesn't equal zero, and I'll show you what to do there. All right, so let's start. If this question says solve for x, I need to get x alone. There's, so you might think, oh, I do inverse, I maybe I divide, I should combine like terms. There's no like terms here. I have an x squared and an x. How could I possibly get x alone when I have an x squared? I need to pull it apart so that I can have x alone, all right? Uh, before I even show you that step, think about this. Here's a riddle for you. Think of two numbers. Multiply those two numbers. The answer is zero. The answer has to be zero. So you're thinking of two numbers, a times b and the answer has to be zero think of two numbers okay i bet you i could read your mind one of those numbers is zero am i right of course i'm right has to be so the point is um if the product of two numbers is zero either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero one of them has to be zero keep that in mind i'm going to come back to that so let's look over here I'm gonna look at this thing. What do I know about a uh, quadratic trinomial? I know I can use the sum product method. I need two numbers whose sum is seven and product is 10. Well, x plus five times x plus two. Five times two is 10, five plus two is seven, and I'm gonna bring down to equal zero. Now this looks like this. This thing, this binomial represents the A. This thing, this binomial represents the B. So basically I'm saying a times B equals zero. So just like by this logic, one of those things has to be zero. So I'm gonna, I call this a T chart. I just kind of split it down the middle to show you. I'm gonna create two separate baby problems. Either X plus five equals zero, either the first thing equals zero, or the second thing equals zero, or X plus two equals zero. I call this a baby problem because it's a one step equation. Subtract five on both sides. Fives cancel out and x is alone, and x equals zero minus five. Please don't tell me it's zero. It's negative five, okay? That is one solution. Don't believe me? Take the negative five, plug it in for your original x in both places, of course, because that x is gonna be the same value as this x. So see if negative five squared plus seven times negative five plus 10, if that really works out to be zero. I guarantee it does. Uh, that's gonna be positive 25 minus 35 plus 10. Yep, that's gonna be zero. Okay, do the same thing on this side. And x equals negative two. There you go. And the same thing, you would take the negative two, plug it in here and here, and see if negative two works. I guarantee it does. All right, try the next one. So let's see. I see a two here. So I'm thinking it's either a rainbow question or maybe it's a GCF question. How do you know? You always, always, always look for GCF first. Notice here there was no GCF, so I skipped it and went straight to some product. But here, is there a GCF? Absolutely. 
What goes into both 2 and 50? 2. So we're going to take out the 2 and everything else is going to drop down. What do I mean by that? Um, let's see. If I factor out a 2 from 2x squared, I'm left with x squared minus, if I factor out a 2 from 50, that's a 25. Now, oh man, I got to go further. This is something called factor completely. Because this thing, with ignoring the 2, this thing looks very familiar. It looks like dots. So I'm going to give you an example of every one of those. Difference of 2 squares. How do you factor a difference of 2 squares? You look for conjugates. So I'm going to drop down the 2. Um, I'll leave it in red, actually, for you. I'm going to drop down the 2. And this thing becomes x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then, of course, the equals 0 drops down also. Okay, this is nice. I got my x's alone, right? I didn't want x squared, so I was able to factor it apart so that I can get x alone. Once it's alone, I'm going to make a t-chart here. And people ask me, does the 2 go in the t-chart? No, because either this is 0 or this is 0. It's impossible to make 2 equal to 0. That doesn't make sense. 2 is 2. So 2 times either this has to be 0 or this has to be 0 in order to get 0 as my answer. So same thing as over there, x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. Do your additive inverse, subtract 5 on both sides, x equals negative 5. A lot of people can kind of see that it's going to be the opposite sign as your answer, but show your work, at least until you become a pro. Alright, here we add 5 on both sides, and x equals positive 5. So two answers. Usually a quadratic will give you two answers. There's a case when it only gives you one answer. Um, but you, when you work it out, you'll see it comes from a perfect square trinomial where both numbers are the same, so both numbers come out to be the same. There's also cases where you get no answer, but that's if the sum product method doesn't work. Uh, for these, for this level of math, it will always work. All right, one more. Try it on your own. Stick around. I'll do it with you or for you. So here, is there a GCF? Is there a number that goes into 3, 7, and 6? No, don't tell me that 3 goes into 3 and 6 because you're ignoring the 7. I need to, all of them have to play. So, nope, can't take out a 3. Here, I have to use the rainbow. 3 times 6 is 18. It's x squared plus 7x minus 18 equals 0. Drops down. Now, now I can use some product. You instinctively know that x times x is x squared. Now I got it in my mind, or you can show your work. Factor 18, 9 and 2, 18 and 1, or 6 and 3. Which one do you use? The one whose sum is 7. Here's a clue. Because this is a negative 18, 1 is plus, 1 is minus. So I'm really going to subtract to get that 7. Uh, let's see here. It's going to be positive 9 and negative 2. 9 times 2 is negative 18. 9 plus negative 2 is positive 7. See, the bigger factor gets the middle sign, so we're good. But wait, there's more. In the rainbow, this 3 that magically disappeared comes back here and here. Next step in the rainbow is to divide by a GCF if there is one. Is there a number that goes into 3 and 2? No. Is there a number that goes into 3 and 9? Yes, that's 3. So this leaves me with x plus 3. This one just drops straight down as 3x minus 2 equals 0. Almost done. T-chart. I highly recommend you try this one again on your own because this one has all the steps. Uh, so either x plus 3 equals 0 or 3x minus 2 equals 0. Baby one-step equation here. Subtract 3 on both sides and x equals 3. I hope you can see that. Here, not so baby. This one you actually have two steps. So here 3x equals 2, and then you have to do another step, divide by 3. Don't be scared of fractions and run to the calculator. You can leave it as 2 thirds. x equals 2 thirds. Okay? Uh, just in case you can't see that, x equals 2 thirds is your second answer. Thanks for watching. See ya.